Uh, what I'm about to say is, is my opinion, um, and I'll, I'll try to be as liberal as possible, as, as, as our colleague from NATO told us to be. Uh, so, uh, to begin with, first, um, I was listening to the Colonel's uh, presentation, and uh, it's an honor to me, Gordon, that we're, we're in a panel with, 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 with Ukrainians, and the topic is the Ukrainian-Lithuanian panel. Um, and one Dutch professor, it was roughly 2016, 2017, told me, and he, ha he has done work in Ukraine and Lithuania, said, well, the one thing that, that's common between the two of us is, is our sense of humor. And that's what I remember when one colonel mentioned goodwill. So, indeed, the Ukrainian heroes are fighting the West's fight, and, uh, and they're finding a very interesting thing, uh, that uh, Russians can show goodwill. Indeed, their will is so good, they have donated in a month more equipment and weaponry to Ukraine than, than the West together managed over six months. So, uh, so this, is, uh, this is quite an achievement. It's, it's astonishing and it's, it's great. Uh, now, for, uh, for my presentation, uh, I'll go through something very practical. My background is in public administration, so, so this will be a, a governance type of issue with, with certain dilemmas. Um, because as, as um, Dr. Harper pointed out in, in his keynote, uh, there's a problem on the edge of NATO, something between Article 3 and Article 5. And the problem is basically time. So it's, a, it's an ar arithmetic of time, a calendar problem. And so the small states, along along the the russian front uh, front frontier uh, need to, need to figure out how to go about and buy a certain amount of time and uh, so lithuania has been thinking about this for a while and they've been looking to places like israel uh, like switzerland like like finland because these are the places that during the cold war or in the case of israel up until now finland indeed as well um, have created systems and uh, the thing is that uh, of course identifying an idea, a, a doctrine, a concept is, is, is doable. It's, it's the delivery that's the tough part. So I can very quickly come, out, come up with an idea that I could become a cook of a three-star Michelin restaurant and I can imagine the whole thing, right? Write a strategy for this. It's the delivery of my cooking that might be, might be the problem. So I'll, I'll talk about the delivery bit. Um, so the military strategy of Lithuania is a document that, that, that implies certain development of plans and allocation of funds. And that document has, uh, since time immemorial, uh, it's point nine point one has pointed out that Lithuanian doctrine is based on total and unconditional defense. So declaration-wise, this has been the case for 30 years. Uh, Resource-wise, that has not been the case for 30 years. Um, besides that, Lithuania, uh, at the level of the parl parliament, uh, develops and, and renews a strategy uh, does not have clear correlations with the funds attached. And it's that strategy that, since tw uh, late 2021, elaborates the idea of total defense in kind of more concrete terms. Because the military strategy is, is, is very specific and is focused on, on conventional defense and the forces that, that the, the chief of defense can actually mobilize and, and is pretty sure that they will come. So that's where the, where the commitment goes. And once you go into the whole society, um, level, uh, government and the civilian government and local government are implicated. And so this national security strategy does not have a mechanism yet of how uh, competences, resources, funding will be allocated. But there's, there's a lot of, of thinking going around that. And also now with the, with the Ukrainian war, we, we are in a, in a process of society, a societal kind of sh mental shift. So there's a lot of, of, of people who are doing a lot uh, from the bottom-up point of view, so both in, in terms of, of, of trying to help Ukraine, but also trying to, to be prepared. So here you can see uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in the central square of Vilnius, there, were, uh, there are uh, possibilities to, get, uh, to train for your first aid. And that's done by, uh, by an NGO. Uh, so so what, what's this concept of total and conditional defense? Uh, so first of all, it's uh, constitutionally prescribed. And again, here's, uh, here's a catch. The Constitution prescribes that every citizen has a right and duty to defend the country. Uh, when you go into the practicalities of, say, gun ownership, 
uh, that's not necessarily the case. So, so uh, reserve officers, uh, reserve reserve soldiers cannot cannot hold weapons at home, as as the case is in in Switzerland. In Switzerland, and and the, the the weapons are not decentralized. So, so you would actually need some time uh, to have your reserve uh, reserve so soldiers equipped and armed. Uh, this is this is an open question and a very politically salient question because, uh, of course, of of risks regarding. Uh, criminality. Um, it's also institutionally undeveloped as of yet. Paradoxically, and I'll speak uh, ad additionally later on with this, um, I inside the, the mindset of, of the Lithuanian political establishment, and I probably say much of society, is that the key threat, the existential threat to, to, to stability of, of the state and, 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 and survival is Russia. That's the threat. Uh, that's their stable interest to get rid of us, and our stable interest is not to allow them to. And that's not going to change uh, no matter what. Indeed, that has been the case even since the Yeltsin era. Um, but the challenges that, that uh, the state has come up with were really not um, military or Russian, indeed. Uh, so we had, uh, we had COVID. Uh, we had the, the migrant crisis uh, from Belarus, which you might say that's a, a Russian instigated, instigated uh, issue. But a few years earlier than that, we also had a very interesting event. A large um, recycling company that hold, held, uh, um, kind of inappropriately held tens and tens of thousands of old tires, uh, caught fire, and that was a major ecological disaster uh, for, for a small town. And what we discovered that there's, there are no structures to mobilize uh, firefighting and rescue capabilities. So, so the, the local firefighters had a problem to actually coordinating with their own service to, 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 to achieve, achieve effects. But also, more was needed, and, and there was no institutional framework. And there was uh, bickering and quarreling. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, a, a Chernobyl type uh, um, drama was unfolding on TV where, where the local mayor was, was going insane and trying to coordinate and, and the Minister of Interior was, was saying that well, he, there, it's not his mandate and so on. So, so th this thinking that some sort of um, whole of government approach towards crisis was in the making already. And so when, when Ukraine happened and, and of course what we've seen in the Battle of Kiev uh, is that you need um, engagement, rapid engagement of, of very broad um, uh, swathes of society to, to achieve, achieve results. Uh, so this is, this is kind of the, the understanding. And so pre-2014, uh, 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 similar to Colonel's kind of time frame, I have accidentally come up with a, with a similar one. So pre-2014, the thinking was, well, uh, basically Russia is not going to attack, they're not crazy. And we don't need to develop our conventional capabilities because NATO. Uh, after 2014, there's some thinking, well, perhaps that's not exactly the case. So we need to do at least something about Article 3, uh, but that should be done by, by the military. Uh, and then now post, post February 24, uh, then the society needs to come in. Uh, in, in a very real way. And, uh, but that thinking was already done by the, by the new parliament and then the um, uh, and the, the three levels are described in the national security strategy as three pillars. So there's three pillars which are all indispensable to national security. This is the conventional military, the alliance structure, and the, uh, the involvement of the population. Um, and um, going for next, uh, this is something we're trying to think about. Um, is what's the purpose of total defense? And the hypothesis here that we're small and Russia is big, right? So Russia can have specialized services for whatever action they're taking. You know, they can have the intelligence uh, uh, and whatever else specialized, and, and they can have their own track of, of effects on us, right? And they can overwhelm us if they do it in a coordinated fashion, but we know they might not be able to. Uh, so therefore, it's likely that purely due to the differences in size, we, if, if there's only one or two lines of, of attack from a specialized service or specialized competence, co competence, 
if we had a kind of a, a basis of cooperation and coordination, we could mobilize and kind of match, match, match that attack and, 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 and neutralize it. That's, uh, that's the idea. So this, this, is, the, this is the thinking of, of coordination uh, versus command. And as we can gather from what's happening in Ukraine, so this, this coordination aspect, even if it's slightly chaotic at times, is something that might, uh, kind of at, a, at the local level, create, uh, create um, uh, capacities that, that manage to frustrate the, the enemy's, enemy's goals. The problem then is, from the Western point of view, that it's not really elegant, right? The problem very often with the, with the Western pedantism is that you need to have a structure, you need to have a doctrine, you need to say what you do and do what you say. And, and that is, that's a weakness in a sense in, 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 a, in a competitive situation because we become transparent to a greater degree than, than the potential enemy. Um, another very important issue is how you uh, organize whole of, whole of society approach because there are ministerial areas of responsibility. And what has been happening uh, with COVID, for example, so the chief of, of crisis management was the Minister of, of Health, and then he would try to, mobilize, uh, try to mobilize other ministerial areas of responsibility and local government through voluminous texts. So he would write his orders of 40 pages, and what we very quickly discovered that at, at a certain point, the rapidity of change of the regulatory text is such that the local actors stop caring as well as the society so this cannot be the solution so the government has now made a decision to establish a center of crisis management uh, which would then be uh, within the structure of the government chancellery and and that's more that's a small body of about 20 20 persons would maintain a situation center and they would then have the ability to call up uh, whoever they want without really much consulting with other ministries. Because another challenge which we discovered at the ministerial level is that the ministries would delegate a person which they don't need very much anyway. So, so very often you would get the crisis managers being uh, of, of a lower competence than the best. So this is also, also a, a very practical, uh, practical issue. Um, another uh, very, very important issue is how do you plan? And I've, I've mentioned a little bit about this. Do you plan against actors, right? How important is intelligence? So if we do planning and training and exercising and, and the resource allocation towards actors, meaning how will we fight Russia, that m might not necessarily develop the kind of transversal and general skills and competences within the entire uh, government, which might be useful uh, tackling uh, kind of a broad range of crises. So this is like, a, do we create a, a focus on general interoperability, cooperation, coordination? Or do we uh, focus, focus on Russia? And this is a really important political question. It's not a question now when, when there's a shooting war in Ukraine, but in the next election when there isn't a shooting war in Ukraine and other, uh, other uh, issues are on the political agenda, uh, this focus might be lost. That's again a weakness of, of the democratic governance when discussing this, this type of question. Um, and then there's uh, finally the fourth challenge, and I think it's a real challenge, and it's a challenge from the military towards the political level. It's not an answered question, is the effectiveness. So here, uh, it's clearly what we've seen on February 24th, uh, kind of posing uh, and, and, and demonstrating unity does not deter Russia. Russia is deterred by uh, conventional forces. And so, uh, if we imagine that we have the we have the NATO alliance pillar, which mostly implied uh, host nation support expenses for the for the defense budget, and then we have the conventional development as a second pillar, that's two expensive things. And if you add the whole of society, and you you need to train and retrain hundreds of thousands of people in whatever competence, uh, this this really gets out of hand quickly, and questions might be raised. Well, if we have NATO, shouldn't this be a, some form of a discount on expenses? And so the 2% then serves a kind of a bad, bad, bad purpose because 2% is something NATO says should be enough for, for, for the gap from three to five. So for a politician to say, well, we need 5% GDP to get the third pillar in is almost impossible. So, so my, my, my prediction is that 
We have a, a government agreement for 2.5 to 3 in, in towards the 2030s. I imagine if the shooting war is over, this will be very hard to maintain over a few election cycles towards the future. So this is, this is an important thing, that the three pillars, to do them properly, is expensive. And the military says, well, let's do at least one or two of them well, instead of diluting the funding. And, and uh, I think th this is something that's on the agenda and, and probably will be on the, the agenda in the election of 24. Um, so, uh, now some, some arguments for the analysis. One important thing, if we look at Israel, Finland or, or, or Switzerland, is that um, you have to have conscription and this conscription needs to be universal. It cannot be partial as is the case in Lithuania now. So essentially what you say, you, you, you merge the education system with the military system and is the 13th class of the secondary school that has to happen. Because what we've learned with COVID and what we've learned with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the Belarusian um, illegal border cro crossing crisis and with the Ukrainian refugees crisis, that COVID has allowed to develop a lot of kind of friendship and networks between the various services and various volunteers, that when the Ukrainian refugee um, uh, wave came in, we actually managed quite well, because we just used the, the, the COVID experience. But you can imagine that this, this has a best before date. So if you don't do this for five years, this will be all, all gone. So it's, 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 it's uh, kind of a perishable product, perishable competence that you, you have in your system. Um, so, so the debate, uh, I, I thought, what, what, what's a good metaphor for, for the debate that's happening in Lithuania as we now have passed this new national security strategy? Is uh, imagine a country as a person and then you have this Maslow pyramid of needs. And so physiological needs are most important. So that's, that's the welfare state. In, in some sense, and basic welfare, and then it's the military. And, and then you can go to self-actualization, which is uh, kind of advanced industry 4.0 and so, so, so on. The ideal model is that this uh, industrial base serves the security needs of a country in a way that it creates added value and so supports, kind of a cycle supports the bottom, uh, bottom bits. And, and then the, the question from kind of this eternal question where to invest the public funds uh, might be simple at, at an individual person's level if he's kind of has his has his uh, mental uh, stuff together he probably could make a decision should i buy a, a ferrari or a loaf of bread and generally that happens but it, but the state is fragmented of course there are opinions and there's a spectrum of opinions is that enough or not enough so i thought this this is probably the the, the key question when we think about whole of society, because whole of society implies expenses which are way be beyond the 2%, and therefore you need to have a, 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 an economic policy that creates security outcomes, so to speak, an industrial base which is next to non-existent in Lithuania. That's, that's something also um, that has become part of the discussion in recent months, because the government has decided to move the military R&D file to the Ministry of Economy. So, so they, they actually do what they say to, to make, make the, the whole of society approach of total defense total. But the question is, are we really that good in coordinating four or five ministries as, as, a, as a planning, uh, planning uh, uh, exercise or, or routine? Uh, I, I have my doubts. Um, um, then it's, uh, yeah, yeah, two, two more slides. So. Um, um, so I'll, I'll skip those because um, so the, the final point of the previous slide was that there's there's a question now that Finland will integrate with with uh, uh, with NATO will they become more like us or will we manage to become more like them because uh, the Finnish model is really expensive and that's politically something uh, that's an easy sell that now we're in NATO so we get a certain a certain uh, certain benefit. Another, another issue politically is, is the United States' importance in the NATO alliance system. So my metaphor for that is the Saturn. So you can see in the middle that's the United States, uh, Lithuania, small, small members are, are the rings. They're just dust. And there's something, uh, something that, uh, uh, that are, are the big satellites, France and 
places like that. So, so the question is uh, that if we have um, uh, the total defense approach as being developed is completely uh, conditional on the United States and the current alliance system being there. If you take it out, uh, the gravitational forces will shift. And what we already now have more or less answered ourselves is that um, uh, nationally you cannot imitate a Finnish model as is in, in the case of Lithuania. So, so the alliance element is an indispensable element for the whole of defense for Lithuania. So a certain bilateral and uh, or uh, agreements with the United States via Poland is something that's thought a lot about. Of course, that might not be important now, but uh, the American factor in NATO alliance is, is something that might completely change how we're thinking about this. And with that, I'll conclude not to waste your time anymore.